Let's start with the global markets picture. We had uh, US equities now sitting flat. Uh, European equities are rallying today. Now signs of risk appetite increasing. Bonds in the US are dropping. Commodity prices are increasing. Dollar is exceptionally weak. What's driving the market? Well, the whole uh, you know, rally frenzy continues at the moment, whereby the positive sentiment is just uh, uh, continuing, I guess you can say. I mean, uh, the Dow's at a big level. Uh, 9,600 is quite a decent technical level on that index. Uh, last night we had the S&P close at a uh, new half for the year. So, you know, technically and, and sentiment is all just playing into the hands of the bulls at the moment. Um, from our point of view, we think that if the Dow can extend from here, yeah, I guess the next level to look at is 9,800. You saw data come out in the state today with uh, uh, University of Michigan confidence coming up better than expected, yet again playing into the positive sentiment story. The data out in China, all quite decent. Yeah, so uh, commodity prices on, on the up, uh, everything is just uh, quite strong at the moment, pointing to you know, further, further strength in these equity markets. And that data in China really helping our resource sector today. We've got Kumba Iron Ore specifically strong, sitting up around 5% at uh, 267 Rand. Yeah, all our resources uh, stocks doing quite well. Kumba, or, Kumba Iron Ore, no exception. Um, you know, showing that there is still demand for, for these resources. Uh, I mean, our gold stocks performing exceptionally well this whole week. Um, I guess the whole, the whole play on, on a safe haven against inflation now that You've seen the data out of China on, on, on the manufacturing productivity, um, uh, commodity prices flying. So, yeah. Let's take a look at individual stocks. We've got uh, very few stocks sitting low today on the top 40, but one in particular, MTN traded down. Um, we've got a lot of news coming out around MTN deal, indications that uh, Barty could have finally sweetened the deal, uh, offering uh, all cash uh, to minority shareholders. Is this something that you could uh, see some more upside for the share going into next week? I don't want to speculate on it, you know. Um, at, at the moment, uh, it's priced in. They're valuing the, the whole deal about 145 rand a share, which should equate to, to where we trade now, 128, 10 to 15% discount. These type of mergers always have that type of discount, just with the risk associated in case something happens. But uh, you never know. I mean, there's nothing in black and white just yet. Nothing's been signed. So if they do manage to sweeten the deal, um, yeah, we could see MTN get into 132, 135. Uh, obviously, you know, the reason being down today, maybe people were long from, from 120, 115, taking some profits. So that, that, it's not really going to move until we see further news on, on this whole merger. Um, construction stocks also coming out with the results. We've got WBHO. Now, they had a strong set of results. Their headline earnings per share up around 27%. Order book appears strong around 15 billion rand. Are you buying the stock? Do you have the stock in your portfolio? Yeah, well, we, we like them when on, on decent pullbacks. The only worrying factor, but this is from an investor's point of view, so um, is, is the outlook beyond 2010, 2011. 2012 looks quite thin at this point in time. That could all change uh, if the economy does manage to, to stage even further recovery. Um, but yeah, I mean, construction stocks, on, on any pullback, they do seem to be quite decent. It seems well supported at lower levels, so I would be buying them there, yeah. Avengers uh, headline earnings, though, down around 10%. Now, this backing the, the trend we've seen with yeah. the, the likes of Murray and Roberts and Group 5 also reporting some strong set of results. Yeah, that, that, you know, that, that they came out with, uh, with an update saying it was going to be slightly softer. So, I mean, looking at the share price action, it, it rallied quite nicely this week. What I did like to see, uh, if I'm invest, I saw some investors complaining about it, the fact that they didn't increase their dividends. But uh, from our point of view, it's not such a bad thing because the same as, as we said about uh, WBHO, from 2011, order book looking quite thin. So, obviously, just uh, retaining some capital in case they don't manage to, to, to get some big orders on their books and whatnot. Right, now Aspen, also another company, reaping the rewards of international expansion. Their share of uh, revenue coming in from international operations increasing to around 50%. Do you see some further growth opportunities for investing in the share? Well, Aspen throughout this whole recession has definitely been one of the, the strongest performing stocks uh, on the JSE, obviously because of its defensive nature, like, with the likes of uh, ShopRite, Tiger Brands, etc., etc. So, uh, you know, and the fact that they are, are the biggest supply of antiretroviral drugs, they've got a big contract with the state. Um, the, the only problem there, if, you, if you're quite bullish on, on the defensive sector and Aspen in particular, is if, if the 
if the economy uh, continues to, to show signs of recovery and does recover quite nicely, I don't see much room for growth. I think investors and traders alike will move out of the more defensive type shares, the likes of ShopRite, Tiger Brands, Aspen, and into your more cyclicals like uh, your banking stocks, your, your resources like we're seeing today. Yeah. Now, going forward into next, into, the, into next week, we've got most of the stocks really up today. Which stocks in particular do you think haven't been keeping up with this rally and looking particularly inexpensive at the moment? Um, Are there any? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you know, you just got to stand back and look at it. Expensive, yes, it, it is quite expensive, but historically speaking, it, we're still well, well off our highs. So from our point of view, yeah, we've come, we did quite a lot of work this week. Um, I think... In, I can't see any definite cheap stocks that are screaming buy right now. If we can have just a, a slight, slight bit of weakness on, on most of the sectors, I'd, I'd definitely be buying still. So right now, I'd be patient. Um, on the flip side of that, if, if we don't see any consolidation or, or move lower, I, I'd wait for, for certain stocks, certain financials for argument's sake, um, to, to break to break some resistance and that'll be another buy signal for us. Um, just for argument's sake, if Standard Bank can break 102, there is, is quite a decent resistance level there, um, they would signal a buy to us. So I think that's the type of strategy I've adopted right now.